Good evening, brother. How are you? Fine, fine. God is doing good. Okay, we'll start today's class. Dear brothers in Christ, uh, we thank our Lord for giving yet another opportunity to discuss His wonderful words of life. So, from last few weeks, we have been studying about the topic about uh, soul, that the soul dies, the soul is not immortal, the soul is mortal, the soul can die. So, after seeing all these things, we have seen various uh, misconceptions from the Bible, how, uh, you see, the, if those things are studied properly with a biblical viewpoint, those also clearly prove that the soul uh, uh, dies. So, at the last, uh, we are left over with one thing, that is, uh, you see, the story of the rich man and Lazarus. That is given to us in Luke 16, chapter 19 to 31. So, I request everybody to please open your Bibles to Luke 16, chapter 19 to 31. Okay. Now, uh, Brother Emmanuel, can you read Luke 16, chapter verse 19? Completely, I'll tell you, you read all the verses one by one, brother. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man, a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and the fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. Very good. So here it says, there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen. He ate very nicely every day. Then verse 20 and 21, brother. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores. Continue. And, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs, which fell from this rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. See, there was a beggar at the door of the rich man. And he was so worst condition that his body was full of sores, full of wound. And he was eating from the rich man's table, the bread, the crumbs of the waste, whatever were falling from the rich man's table, were actually ate by this poor beggar. And he was in such a pathetic condition that the dogs came and licked his sores. Okay. Next, what happened? Verse 22, Buddha. Verse 22, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Ah, it came to pass that one day both of them died. The beggar died, the rich man also died. So one, uh, see, both were buried, it seems. Sir. Now, where did they go? You see, uh, read, brother. continue, brother. continue reading. Huh? Yeah, verse 23 and 24. And in the hill, the lift of his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and the Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Mm. Both died, then one person went to where? Other person went where? Where did the rich man go? Who can tell? Where did the rich man go after his death? Are you nobody. Uh. Hades. Hades. Ah uh, yes. Hades. He went to Hades. Hell. Okay. Now where did the poor beggar Lazarus go? Into Abraham's bosom. There is a big divide between the two chasm. There is a chasm. See. He went to Abraham's bosom. There's a great gap, huge gulf between both of them, it seems. You see, and he was tormented in fire there. He could see Abraham. You see, he could see, you see, Lazarus uh, sitting uh, in Abraham's uh, huh? bosom. You see, he could see them clearly. You see, and uh, Lazarus sitting there and the rich man crying for help. Uh, you see, then verse 25, what was the reply given by God? Verse 25, but Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receives thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. 
very good brother but there was a reply given by god saying not like that uh, uh, you see uh, god is saying to uh, the rich man in your life time when uh, your life was there you received good things but then lazaro received the bad things now it is a time for him to receive good things and time for you to receive the bad things therefore he is uh, comforted and you are tormented okay now verse 26 brother ha huh? verse 26 and beside all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so they would so they which would pass from hence to you or cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from thence ah then it says uh, nobody can come from there to here neither a person can come from there to here because there is a huge gap it seems okay therefore what did the uh, you see the rich man request god uh, read verse 27 and 28 then he said I pray thee therefore father that thou would send him to my father's house for i have been brethren brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment ah then you see uh, he requested at least uh, not to me please send uh, him to my uh, father's house there are five brethren of mine i don't want them to come at this place uh, you see because if they come to this place uh, what will happen uh, you see they will also be tormented so he request them you to send uh, you see lazarus uh, to his father's house to speak to the five brethren then what happened verse uh, 29 ah uh. abram said unto them they have moses and the prophets let them hear them okay good brother yes so there abraham says they have the moses and the prophets let them first listen to them then what happened you see and god tells you see if they did not uh, uh, then uh, you see that uh, response is no 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 not like that uh, uh, father uh, if somebody from the dead comes back uh, they will definitely listen then uh, uh you see god says if they don't listen to uh you see uh moses and the prophets neither will they listen if one come back from the dead also continue brother verse 30 and continue brother verse 30 and he said nay father abram but if one went unto them from the dead they will repent continue verse 31 also ah uh. and he said unto him if they hear not moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead yes though one rose from the dead neither will they be persuaded good now what is this one based on this one only many christians have a belief what is that belief you see that uh, you see that uh, uh, the dead uh, you see as soon as they die they go to hell and heaven and who will go to hell who will go to heaven you see only those people who are blessed you see who are those people who give a lot for the lord who help the lord's people only they will go to you see heaven the poor uh, you see they don't do anything for the lord uh, they won't go to heaven they will go to hell if only the rich uh, were supposed to be blessed that's the general thought uh, if so many blessings we have that means the blessings of the lord uh, only then only it is a significance is a sign that you are also beloved of heaven and god will take you to heaven if that was the case dear brethren why would jesus appreciate a poor widow who just gave all her two pennies what all she had that was just only two penny but uh, she gave whatever she had why did jesus appreciate to appreciate that poor lady you see then you see what is the meaning of this one you see now first of all may, many people think this is a real story that really happened during the days of jesus there was a person who was lazarus there was a rich man both died both were taken to you see you know hell and uh, heaven 
you see here uh, communications happened so everybody thinks uh, this is a real story okay the first thing it says that there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fared sumptuously every day okay now does that verse mention anywhere that that rich man was a bad man that the rich man was a wicked man no dear brethren nowhere does it say that that rich man was a bad man at all you see just being rich or is there anything wrong many people of god's children in the bible are blessed with richness abraham job david solomon was so rich and so wise many people came from various countries to visit him and discuss and see his richness and wisdom you see moreover when god gave the law in the law itself god had clearly mentioned that if you were obedient god will bless that people they would be a rich people they would be a lending people not the people who borrow read deuteronomy 28 chapter 1 to 5 sahiji brother can you read deuteronomy 28 chapter 1 to 5 brother and and it had come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i command thee this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all nations of the earth hmm and all these blessings shall come on the and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee mm. if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the lord thy god ah see god said all the blessings will come upon thee you should be a high nation a rich nation rich people you see therefore the bible clearly also says that the richness is actually a blessing of god or the wealth is actually given by god See, Ecclesiastes five nineteen. See for brother, can you read Ecclesiastes five nineteen, brother? Could you repeat that, please? Ecclesiastes five nineteen. You can even read. Okay, okay, okay. Ecclesiastes five. Nineteen. Every man, also to whom God has given riches and wealth, and has given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. See, this is the gift of God: richness, wealth. So, what is wrong in that person being rich? You see, wearing sumptuously, wearing rich clothes. There is nothing wrong. This was actually written in the law. in moreover the verse says in verse 20 and 21 there was a beggar lying at the door of rich man you see and he was full of force daily eating from his table you see and dogs came and licked at his sores you see sir imagine if you are a very rich person you see living luxuriously eating good food will you ever allow such a beggar to stay at the door of your house you tell me will you allow nobody will allow but here the rich man is said that he allowed and he was eating the beggar was eating daily from the rich man's table will we give daily we will give once for all and tell you go please give please move from this place don't be here you see but here daily he was eating from his table dear brethren so here nothing is given that a rich man is good or bad but if you see actually rich man seems to be a good person daily putting crumbs from his table and moreover the dogs are come and licked at him it seems sir yeah. see the bigger condition of lazarus when god gave the law he also gave them the curse of also and the curse of being a beggar was actually from god deuteronomy 28 chapter 15 and 27 uh, sahiji brother can you read deuteronomy 28 15 and 27 deuteronomy 28 15 and 27 
28th chapter but, 15th uh, verse okay but it chapter. shall come to pass yes. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe to do all this all his commandments and his statutes which i command thee this day that all the all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee mm. all these curses shall come and overtake thee then brother verse 27 brother huh? the lord will smite thee with the boats of egypt and with the emirates and and with the staff and with the each whereof thou canst not be healed see Unhealing disease, body full of sores, <clears throat> itching. This was the punishment given by God to the disobedient people. So here, it doesn't mention that Lazarus was a good person. He was a lazy person. He should have seen, staying at a, and lying at a, a rich man's a, you see, house. He could have gone to Jesus and get healed, no? And moreover, why should he beg? When he was supposed to be obedient, God would definitely bless him, heal of uh, him of all the diseases. You see, but here, here, even after the dogs coming and licking, he's still lying there. You see, he's allowing the log, dogs to lick his sores. Will anybody allow dogs to lick his sores? That means, this is a clear picture that Lazarus was no good person at all. You see, there is neither remarks of their good or bad being in the Bible. Okay, now I dead to what happened? Sir? Both of them died, it seems. You see, then what happened? Both of them were buried. You see, the rich man also was buried, the poor man uh, Lazarus also was buried. The rich man, where did he go? Did he go to heaven? No, dear brother, he did not go to heaven. Where did he go? He went to Abraham's. What? Where did he go? Abraham's. Okay, let us read that verse, Luke 16.22. Emmanuel, brother, read Luke 16.22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Ah. The rich man was... You see, where did he go? Did he go to heaven? Did he go to heaven? It says Abraham's bosom. Correct, right, not here, brother? It says Abraham bosom, not heaven. So, everybody would think, ah, brother, where is Abraham? Abraham should be in heaven only, no? Huh? Do you think everybody, all the beggars will go and sit in Abraham's bosom? Huh? Is it literally possible for all the world beggars to go and sit in Abraham's bosom? You see? Moreover, you see, did Abraham go to heaven? Huh? Read John 3.31, brother. John 3.31, brother. Uh, imagine, brother, please read John 3.31. John 3.31 He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthy. And speaketh of the earth that he that cometh from heaven is above all. Brother, John 3rd uh, chapter 13th verse. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I read 30. It's 30. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, who is in heaven? Ah, no man has ascended to heaven. Not even Abraham. Now can everybody go and sit in Abraham's bosom? You see, therefore, it is neither given that he went to hub, ah, heaven. You say that he went to Abraham's bosom. You see, and moreover, you see, it says uh, that uh, huh? he can see Lazarus uh, huh? sitting in Abraham's bosom. And Lazarus can see the rich man burning in hell, it seems, sir. You see, and uh, what was the request of the rich man? He requests God to send Lazarus so that he may dip his fingertip in water and quench his thirst. Read verse 24. Luke 16, 24, brother. Luke 16, 24. Stephen, brother. Can you read Luke 16, 24? Uh, email, brother. Read. Please read. Luke 16, 24. Yes. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the, finger, uh, the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. 
for I am tormented in this flame. For I am tormented in this flame. Cool my tongue, dear brethren. You see, a person burning in hellfire, you see, just a drop of water is sufficient to cool your tongue. Huh? Dear brethren, we are living in summer season. The temperature is so high that without water, very difficult to survive. Imagine in this thirsty summer, if you come to your house and request for water, and uh, somebody coming from your house takes a cold water from the fridge, a glass of water, and just dip their finger and just put one drop of water to your tongue. Will it really quench your thirst? Really, you will get wild enough. It will not quench your thirst at all. Then imagine about a person who is burning in hell. Is it literally possible to quench the thirst? No, dear brother. And God replies saying, once you, are, you receive good, therefore you are receiving bad now. But uh, Lazarus was receiving bad then, now he is receiving good. And does it mean that everybody in their life should have both good and bad? Just because they receive good in, uh, in coming uh, in the future, they have to receive bad? Where does it given in the Bible? Uh, is it compulsory to receive good and bad? The Bible says, no, just now we are read in the law. If you are good, God will bless you. The very meaning of coming of badness at all, dear brethren. The why this cycle? And moreover, when a rich man requests, God says there is a huge gulf. Nobody can pass from here to there, there to here. Eh? Nobody can come from there to here and there to here. Okay. But both can conversation is himself. Both can speak. Both can see. Rich man can clearly see who is sitting in Abraham's bosom. Huh? Last rose. When he can speak, it's himself. So much gap is he shouting and speaking. Eh? Dear brethren, does it mean that hell and ever are next to uh, each other neighbors? If this is the condition, really, eh, the people eh, in hell will be crying. Of course, we know. Eh? Then what about the condition of the people in heaven? Surely, they won't live happily. Because always, continuously, the crying, the scratching sound will be coming to your brain. Huh? Is hell and heaven a neighboring place? Huh? What does the Bible really say about this one? So today, <laughs> we are going to study what is this Luke 16 chapter? You see, is it a real story that really happened during the days of Jesus? Or is it what? You see, Whenever we study the Bible, if you have any question, we need to search the answers from the Bible only. Okay. Now, Jesus, you see, whenever he spoke a parable or a story, he spoke in a particular way. Which way did Jesus begin a parable? Let us see. Luke 15 chapter, <clears throat> you see, verses 1, 2 and 3. Stephen, brother, please read Luke 15 chapter 1, 2 and 3. You can read from the screen also. Yes, yes. The parable of the lost sheep. Luke 15, then, verse 1, 2 and 3, brother. Yes. Then, then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, Continue. Okay, what man of you, having an under sheep, if he lose one mm. of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine and nine in the wilderness ah. and go after that which is lost until he find it? See. And when he has found it, okay. thank you, he layeth on it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Thank you. Let us see verse by verse and go. Okay, thank you, brother. So, Luke 15 chapter, Jesus begins to preach to the Pharisees and Sadducees. And the first thing he spoke was a parable. Now, as he continues, he speaks a second parable. Luke 15, chapter, verse 8. Brother. Somebody can read. Okay, 8. Luke 15, 8. Brother. Either what woman having 10 pieces of silver 
If you lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. Ah, see here also, Jesus uh, spoke a parable. We know this is a parable. Okay, we will be studying this one in the coming days also. Now, read Luke 15, 11, brother. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that, that follows to me. Ah, okay. And he divided. Okay, okay. So here also, uh, Jesus tells a parable. Now, how does it begin the parable? There was a certain, you see, rich man who had two sons. So here, see the style of Jesus speaking a parable. Now, read Luke 16, chapter, verse 1, brother. See from brother, Luke 16, verse 1. 16, 1. 16, 16, 1. Yes. Okay. The parable of the unrighteous steward. And he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man ah. which had a steward. You see, yes, and the same so Jesus him. begins in the same way. There was a certain rich man who had a steward. A year before, what do you see? A certain rich man had two sons. So same way, wherever Jesus spoke a parable, there was a particular style of Jesus speaking a parable. So here also, what Jesus spoke in Luke 16 chapter was not a direct, you see, incident, real incident that happened during the type of Jesus, but it was a parable. Now read Luke 16, 19, brother. Stephen, brother, please read Luke 16, 19. Sixteen nineteen. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. Ah. And fat. Here also, see, observe, there was a certain rich man. Same way. So, here also, the beginning of this uh, parable also happened in the same way. Therefore, what Jesus spoke here was a parable. You see, it's not a little incident at all. You see, dear brethren, therefore, you see, Jesus spoke a parable. You see, and we all know, whenever Jesus spoke a parable, it was uh, not a real thing that happened, but he, Jesus was using stories to uh, make them to understand a better thing. So, if this is a parable, and moreover, if you see NIV Bible, before Luke 16, chapter 19 verse, it would have put a subheading saying, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. If anybody has NIV, they can refer it. Otherwise, we will try to share the screenshot with you after the meeting is over. Okay. Now, here, if this is a parable, now who is this rich man? Now who is this beggar? Whenever Jesus spoke a parable, he usually compared two things and two people. Two category of people. So, here also, Jesus is actually comparing two category of people. And who is this rich man? It says... The character of the rich man was he was clothed with purple, clothed with fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. So, what is the meaning of uh, putting purple robe and uh, fine linen cloth? Purple robe means kingship. You know, we all remember how Jesus was, uh, you see, crucified on the cross, how Jesus was persecuted, how Jesus was whipped. You see, after uh, this is scratching him. Uh, you see, he was brought before Pilate and he was clothed with purple robe. Everybody teased him as the king of the Jews, John 19, 2. So, purple was actually worn by the king. Everybody teased him, if you are a king, go and save yourself. So, purple in the Bible represents the kingship. Now, what do you mean by, you see, the white linen cloth. White linen cloth means the righteousness of saints. You see? Let us read Exodus 19.5. Exodus 19.5. Uh, <clears throat> Sahaja Buddha, uh, please. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Ah. For all the 
above all people. So this was promised to which nation? The nation of Israel. Therefore, when uh, they were delivered from Egypt, God brought uh, 10 severe plagues upon Egypt. Uh, the people of Israel were blessed people. They were the peculiar and the royal nation. Then, you see, they were given the law. God had uh, specially delivered them and brought to the Canaan land, gave them the manna, protect them from the heat uh, by the clouds and gave them the light uh, by the pillar of cloud. Gave them cold water, you see, through the rocks in the wilderness. Uh, so then uh, this rich man is a nation of Israel. And uh, he weighed white robe. What is the meaning of white robe? White robe means righteousness. Read Revelation 19.8. Emmanuel Buddha, can you read Revelation 19.8? Revelation 19.8 And to her was granted that she, she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteous, righteousness of saints. Yes, fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That means uh, the whole world are unrighteous and sinners before God. But, you see, in the sight of God, they are justified. The people of Israel are justified by sacrifices which they used to give. Therefore, they had fellowship with God. They are the righteous nation. You see, and uh, the rich man ate bread. What do you mean by bread in the Bible? It's the word of God. Jesus said, no, a man shall not live by bread alone, but uh, by every word uh, proceeded from the word of mouth of God. That means word of God was given to the nation of Israel. Like, you see, and uh, they were rich with the blessings of God. They were given all the covenants, all the sacrifices, all the promises of God. Read Romans 9 chapter verse 4 and 5. Romans 9, chapter, verse 4 and 5. Sahaja Buddha, can you read Buddha? Who are Raelite hmm. to whom pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Those are the fathers and of whom are concerning the flesh Christ came, who is our own God blessed forever. Amen. Ah, you see, to whom belongs the covenant, the law, services of God, promises, fathers, everything was given to whom? The nation of Israel, the Ten Commandments, the priests, the kings, the judges, the prophets, all the festivals in the Bible. Dear brethren, all the things, sacrifices, they are all given to whom? The nation of Israel. They were protected. Therefore, the, cho the chosen people of God was the nation of Israel. Therefore, they were very rich with God's blessings. Hence, the rich man is the nation of Israel. Now, who is the poor man? You see, the poor man who was full of sores. You see, dogs came and licked him. You see, this is the nation of Israel of Gentiles. It's full of source. This is the Gentile nation who were designed to be fed from the rich man's table. You see, the dogs came and licked him. You see, huh? the dogs means what? Uh, unclean animal. Leviticus 11 chapter, they mention about the clean and unclean animal. The dog is unclean animal. Therefore, the Gentiles were treated as dogs in the Bible for the nation of Israel. And all the filthy things they did, the idol worship, the nude worship, uh, the human sacrifices, you see, all the, you see, lustful things, uh, these uh, were like a uh, source on their body. They were completely infected from head to toe. Their body were completely full of sores. Uh, such a way, the dogs came and licked them, with see, you see, the dogs means what, uh, you see, the unclean animal, they were comforted uh, by their uh, practices, false practices, uh, justifying them, thinking that this is correct. Uh, but that uh, their source were there, the burning were there. Uh, you see, therefore, you know, the Bible says Ephesians 2, 12 and 13, read brother, that uh, they are the beggars. Ephesians brother, 2nd chapter 12 and 13. Shaiji brother, can you read?
efficient second chapter 12 and 13 so you believe there ah uh, yes brother uh, that at that time they were without christ being aliens from the commonwealth of israel and strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope and without god in the world but now in christ jesus ke who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of christ you see very clearly mentions so we were as aliens beggars far from the covenant of god far from god but now god has recognized these are the two people the rich man and the beggar the gentiles and the israel nation what happened one day came both of them died remember both of them died the same day that means you see god had given a special favor to the jewish people the israel nation that ended and god had given a displeasure disfavor to the gentiles that was ended at the same time when when the jewish people rejected messiah and crucified him on the cross you see what happened all the favor god gave to israel ended what did they tell before pilate shall i kill your king Shall I crucify a king? What do the people of Israel say? We don't have any king except Caesar. Please crucify him. So Jesus was rejected as the king. You see. Then what happened? Then God turned to the Gentiles. You see, first privilege, first opportunity was given to whom? Israel people. When they rejected, God turned to the Gentiles. Read Acts thirteen, chapter forty-four to forty-six. Stephen, brother, are you there? Can you read? Acts thirty-four, thirteen chapter, verse forty-four to forty-six. Thirteen. Thirteen chapter. Forty-four to forty-six, brother. Okay, brother. Okay, come. Forty-four. You can read from verse forty-five and forty-six. Yes, forty-five and forty-six. Okay. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy, and spake <clears throat> against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, "It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life." Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Hmm. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Gentiles. Favor was given to the Gentiles. You remember, once what happened? A Gentile woman, a Canaan woman, came in seeking favor for Jesus. What was the reply that Jesus gave to that woman? You know, this is beautifully. You see, let us read. Uh, Sajib, brother, please read Matthew fifteen chapter. Matthew fifteen chapter, verse twenty-two. Twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, brother. And behold, a, a woman of Canaan came out of the same cause and cried unto him, saying, "Have mercy on me, O Lord, the son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil." See, she requested, "Master, have mercy on me." What was the reply of Jesus? Verse twenty four, brother. Huh? But he answered and said, "I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel." Ah, I am sent only to Israel, not to Gentile nations. Then continue, brother. Ah. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, "Lord, help me." But he answered and said, "It is not meet to take the child's blood and to cast it to dogs." Ah, you see. Clearly, Jesus said, "It is not good for to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. The Gentiles were treated as dogs. You see. Then continue, brother. Verse twenty-six. What happened? Ah. And she said, "Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table." You see. Yes, Lord, it's true. But yet uh, the dogs eat the crumbs which are fallen from the 
master's table. This is the same thing what we read in the parable. Lazarus was eating from the rich man's table. Small, small favor from the Jewish people. The Gentiles people were seeking. Remember Naaman? You see, he received the blessing from God. Remember so many people in Jewish people. You see, Rahab. You see, huh? Shall Ruth. You see, huh? they all received the blessings of the Lord, dear brethren. Because these are the crumbs. God did never give the complete blessings. Why? If they would give the complete blessings, they have increased their faith more on the false things, what they are doing. And soon the crumbs were given to those who have faith. So what happened? A time came, both of them died. That means the Jewish nation expired. You see, the favor to the Jewish, Jewish people ended. Similarly, the disfavor to the Gentiles also ended. Since then, God began to give favor to the Gentiles, give the truth to the Gentiles. How? The verse says, the angels took the beggar Lazarus to wait Abraham's bosom. Why Abraham is given? Now, what do you mean by Abraham in the Bible? Abraham in the Bible actually is an example for God. How? Abraham sacrificed his only son on Isaac, but received him back to life. Similarly, God sacrificed his only son Jesus and received him back in the resurrection. So, in the Bible, Abraham represents God. You see, therefore, Abraham's bosom is what? You see, God's bosom. So who is sitting on God's bosom? God's children. That means the Gentiles were given the opportunity to become God's children. Read John 1.12. Emmanuel, brother. Can you read John 1st chapter verse 12? John 1.12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on you see, his name. Even to those who believe on his name, become sons of God. Even to the Gentiles, God gave the opportunity through the angels. Who are the angels? The apostles. Who are they? Like angels to us. Who brought the messengers to, of God to us. You see, these are the apostles. Uh, the Gentiles were given the privilege and opportunity to become God's children. Okay. Now there... You see, the rich man also died, but he went to hell. You see, that means what happened? Since that time, since the disfavor came to Israel, God turned back from Israel. What happened? Israel were in suffering. They were destroyed in 70 AD. Dibran. Jerusalem was completely destroyed. Israel people were scattered all over the world. You see, they were never given any favor. Why? Because they stood before Pilate and said, you see, Bilal clearly washed his hands and said, I have nothing to do with his blood. But what did the people of Israel say? Let his blood be upon us and our children. We will answer for it. Same way happened, dear brethren. God's curse came upon Israel. Note on these verses. Luke 19, chapter 41 to 44. Jesus said to the woman, don't cry for me. Jesus wept over seeing Jerusalem, saying, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. At least if you have realized your mistake now. You see, and uh, you see, in Luke 23rd, chapter 27, 29, when Jesus was taken to, to the cross, uh, all the women were crying. Jesus said, don't cry for me. Cry for yourself, for your children. Uh, who went to the pe women who were with uh, children? It would be very difficult. Uh, such a trouble came upon the nation of Israel. They were scattered all over the world. You see, dear brethren, not even a drop of favor was given to them. From the Gentile nation, especially during the days of Hitler, Second World War, 60 lakh Jews were slaughtered systematically, taken to the Holocaust. They were peeled, they were broken, you see, they were smitten all the way possible. They were chastised, dear brethren. You see, they were not even given food to eat. This was the curse of God. This was the guiltiness which are brought upon themselves because of the blood of Jesus. You see, then what was the reply of God? You see, God did, what did God say? There was a good time for you, but now it is a good time for him. There you had a good time, but now it's a bad time for you. But then he had a bad time, now it's a good time for you. That means Jewish age was at the age of favor to the Jews. That time, Gentiles were never favored. Only rich man was favored, the Jewish nation. But now the gospel age. 
in the gospel age, the Israel is not favored. You see, the Gentiles are favored now. The truth is gone to the Gentiles. So Christians are come from all over the world, dear brethren. Therefore, they did not have a good time when Jesus was there. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, now that is the time for them. You see, now is the time for the Israel people to suffer. You can see, the Israel people are suffering a lot of things in the world. We will be studying about Israel in coming days also, dear brethren. We can see war. All these are biblical prophecies, dear brethren. They are suffering. They are being tormented. That's what the scripture says. But uh, there what happened? Uh, Abraham's bosom. Who is sitting? Lazarus. The Gentiles were given the privilege to become the sons of God. Now, there is a huge gap, it seems. Nobody could go from here to there and there to here. What does it mean? That law, that gap is the gap of the law. The people of Israel, today, they still believe in the law. Therefore, they can't come and accept Jesus as a savior until they believe that the law is broken. You see, now there is no law. We are not under the law. We are under grace and truth. John 1.17, Jesus said, huh? law was given by Moses, but truth came by Jesus Christ. You see, dear brethren, therefore, you see, huh? the law period is over. We are no more under the law. We are under grace, dear brethren. So, this is the gap. So, until you believe that the law is dead, you can't come from there to here. Neither can one go from here to the law. Then what was the request? At least send five brethren. Huh? At least send one person from the dead. Five brethren are there in my house. Who are these five brethren? Dear brethren, you know what is the meaning of five? Israel was actually a 12 tribe nation. You see, after death of Solomon, it was divided into how many parts? Who can tell me? How many parts were Israel was divided after death of uh, Solomon? Two. Mm. Very good. So, how many tribes uh, came into one part? How many tribes other part? Judah was separate. Yes. Judah and Benjamin were one mm. tribe. One okay. part. Another ten tribes, other part. Oh, they, were, means, they were the other ten. Yes. That means two became one, ten became five. That is the five brethren. That means, please send them to the other, uh, you see, uh, Israel also. Therefore, you see, when uh, Solomon's, uh, you see, uh, kingdom was divided, uh, God sent a prophet and gave a sign. A cloth was divided into six parts. You see? So, uh, twelve parts, ten parts were given. To one and uh, two parts were given to one. That means Israel being divided. Now what did uh, you see? Uh, rich man say, no, no, no. At least if one raised from the dead and go and speak to us, they will listen. Now who is dead? Uh? Who is dead to the world? Uh? You see, these are the Gentile Christians who are dead to the world. You know, the Bible says, read. Huh? The Christians are dead to the world. Colossians 3rd chapter brother. Colossians 3rd chapter, you see, verse uh, 3. Can somebody 3? Uh, can somebody, Colossians 3 3. Can somebody read Colossians 3 3? Emmanuel, brother, Sanjay, brother. Can we read it? Colossians 3 3. Oh. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Ah, see? You are dead. You are dead. The Christians are dead. Your life is in Christ with God. Therefore, these are dead Christians. If the dead Christians go and tell to the Jewish people, will they listen? Dear brethren, they won't listen at all. Because they have the Moses and the prophets. The law. The law actually told about Jesus. You see, if they don't believe the law, do you think they will believe anybody? You see, the Christians going and telling to them, have you ever tried to witness to a Jewish people? Dear brethren, they won't listen at all. You see, because Jewish people, they believe still in the Torah. Now, Emmanuel brother, read John 5, 46 and 47. John 5, 46 and 47, brother. John 5, 46 and 47. Correct. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. For he wrote of me. Yeah, but if he, he wrote not, of me. Ah, continue. But if he believed not his writings, how shall he believe my words? If you don't believe him, how shall you believe him? Same thing. God gave that right. Oh. 
you see the rich man therefore Abraham, this is speaking about the israel nation and the gentile people not about any people who are dead and the soul go to hell or heaven therefore this is the end of soul i'll be sending the notes please go through the notes any doubts you can have we will discuss next week so next week if you have any doubts please bring it out we'll discuss or else we will go for a free tour now where is the tour you know a tour is for hell we will see what is the meaning of hell in the bible okay the lord has let the lord add blessings to his words if anybody has got any questions any doubts you can ask emmanuel brother any questions any doubts emmanuel brother no any questions brother okay shaiju brother oh, no brother okay stephen brother Thanks. Thanks, brother. Nothing. Okay. So, in the end, we'll finish with a word of prayer.